So I never thought I'd see the day where I have to correct Pastor Mike Winger on the Sabbath. What's up, guys? So unfortunately, Pastor Mike Winger is wrong about the Sabbath. Now, I like the dude. I think his research is very, very thorough for the most part. But for some particular reason, when it comes to the Sabbath, it's very disappointing. When is the earliest in church history that we see Christians worshiping on Sunday instead of the Sabbath? Did it begin with the Catholic Church or was it before? God bless. The Sabbath is the, is the last day of the week, right? That's Saturday. And then you have Sunday, which is the first day of the week. Many people just it sort of start thinking of Monday as the first day of the week because it's like the first day of your work week. But Sunday is the first day of the week. So he's right about that. Sabbath is Shabbat, Sabado, Subota. In every root language of the world, Sabbath is always Saturday. The first day of the week is Sunday. That's universally known. In scripture, it uses the same terminology. First day of the week is referring to Sunday. And so when we get to, um, let's start with Luke 24. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they prepared. First day of the week, they come to the tomb, right? In John 20, it's the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene comes to the tomb. Jesus rose on the first day. That's the idea we get consistently in scripture, that Jesus rose on the first day. That day became pretty important to Christians. It was the day of the resurrection of Jesus. And it seems right away, like very early on, people started gathering on the first day of the week. I never thought I'd see the day that Pastor Mike Winger does not do his homework. We're going to explain that in a little bit. Let's keep going. Here we go in uh, Acts 20, verse 7, where it says, On the first day of the week, when we were gathered together to break bread, Paul talked with them, intending to depart on the next day, and he prolonged his speech until midnight. This tells you not just that they happened to be gathered on the first day of the week, but it was when they gathered. Like, it's on the first day of the week. Why is he mentioning the day? Because this is the routine. When we gather together for what? To break bread, which is not just a coincidental thing. Acts 2 says that they were they gathered regularly to, bake, to break bread, that this was like a, a formal meal and not just an informal thing. This was a Christian gathering, probably communion as well. Paul talks with them. So there they are, gathered on the first day of the week. Okay, so this is... <laughs> this is where I think Pastor Mike Winger forgot to do his homework. Yes, the disciples and the apostles did gather on the first day of the week. And they also gathered daily. And also, quick question. Just because they gathered on the first day of the week, does that mean now that they change Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday? Did they just casually change Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday without God saying anything about it? So then whose authority is it then? Was it the apostles' authority or was it God's authority? If it was God's authority, it would have said, but if it was the apostle, the apostles' authority and they just out of nowhere started gathering on the first day of the week instead of Sabbath as their Sabbath, then it was under their authority and not God's authority to change the law. And if you have the authority to change the law, that means you override God's word. And if you are overriding God's word, you're trying to make yourself God, which is exactly what Satan was doing in heaven before he was kicked out. Isaiah 14, starting from verse 12, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mounts of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Satan was trying to usurp the authority of God, of the Most High. And so when we start changing the law of God, we're trying to usurp the authority of God. God said to Adam in the Garden of Eden, don't eat this fruit, because if you eat the fruit, you will surely die. That was the law. Satan came in, tried to change the law. You will not surely die if you eat that fruit. That's, a, that's just a myth. That's a lie. The disciples did not have the authority to change God's law so why do we believe that just casually they said first day or first day of the week instead of sabbath we'll just we'll just do that instead let's disregard what god actually said let's go with what we say first day out of the week why because jesus christ was resurrected on that day where does it say that we can change the law because jesus christ resurrected on a sunday nowhere 
my church, and I know a lot of different churches and different denominations that have their um, prayer meetings on Wednesdays. Every Wednesday, prayer meeting. Does that mean now that we change the Sabbath from Saturday to Wednesday because we have prayer meetings every Wednesday? No. That would be silly. We, don't, we do not have the authority to change or rewrite God's law. Now, Pastor Mike mentions Acts 2. Let's look at Acts 2 real quick. This was after the baptism of 3,000 souls. Look what it says. Verse 42, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread, okay, breaking of bread, and in prayers, and fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles, and all that believed were together and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men, as every man had need. Now check this out. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God, having favor with all the people. So they were breaking bread when? Just on the first day of the week? No. Daily. Daily. So if they were breaking bread, just from Pastor Mike's logic, if they were breaking bread daily, and, and, and him saying they were breaking bread, and this is, this is the, the, the day of the gathering, Sundays, because they were breaking bread, and this is like the, their day of worship. Here it says that they were breaking bread daily. So does that mean then that every day is now Sabbath? If every day is now Sabbath, then Sabbath is no longer sanctified or set apart. Because sanctified means set apart. So if every day is Sabbath, Sabbath is no longer set apart. I hope you guys are seeing the error in this. Just because they gathered together on the first day of the week, or even daily, does not mean that they changed the Sabbath from Saturday to daily, or the first day out of the week. Well, in 1 Corinthians 16, too, we get another occurrence of first day of the week. Paul tells them, now concerning, I'll start in verse 1, the collection for the saints. They're collecting money to give away to poor Christians in other cities. As I directed the churches of Galatia, so also you were to do. On the first day of the week, each of you is to put something aside and store it up as he may prosper, so that there will be no collecting when I come. Why the first day of the week? Because that seems like that was the regular gathering day. That, that was That's not crystal clear, but it seems implied. It seems implied. Just because it was the first day out of the week doesn't mean they changed Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. Then we have like Revelation that talks about the Lord's Day. Uh, where he's 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 praying and stuff, and it's on the Lord's Day. This is where the, the first day of the week is starting to just be called the Lord's Day. Not the Sabbath, but probably the day that the, of the resurrection. Now, where in Scripture can we prove that Sunday, the first day of the week, is called the Lord's Day? Where can we prove that in Scripture? Not human beings, Scripture. Not mere men or church fathers, but Scripture. Where in Scripture does it say that Sunday is the Lord's day? In Revelation 1 and verse 10, it talks about the Lord's day. John says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Now, let's go to Isaiah 58. What is the Lord's day? According to the Bible, not according to men. What is the Lord's day? In Isaiah 58, God is talking here. The Lord is talking here. Verse 13, it says, If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day. Who's talking? The Lord. What does, he, what does he call his holy day? The Sabbath. So then the Lord's day is what? Biblically, it is the Sabbath. Not Sunday. Biblically, the Lord's day is the Sabbath. Mark 2. Starting from verse 27, and he said unto them, the Sabbath was made for man, not the Jew. The Sabbath was made for man. The Sabbath was made for everybody, not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. What's the Lord's day? Sabbath, not Sunday. The early Jews gathered on Sabbath at the temple, but... 
the church consisted of not just Jews, but of Gentiles as well. They gathered for their own Christian service. They're, they're, we're all followers of Jesus, whether we're Jewish or not, on the first day of the week regularly. There's times where they gathered every day, especially in the very, very beginning of the book of Acts. But when it became routine, it seems like it's that routine immediately, first century life of the apostles, that they were gathering on the first day of the week, not the last day, the Sabbath. The Jews continued to gather on the Sabbath. It's not as though they didn't go to the temple on the Sabbath. In the book of Acts, we still see them continuing to participate in those activities. So I'm not saying they quit one and did the other. If you were Jewish, you probably went to the temple, and then the next day you gathered together with your Christian brothers and sisters. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. There is nowhere in Scripture... And again, if, you, if you're going to use some of the, some of the uh, arguments that he used on the first day of the week, again, just because they gathered on the first day of the week for Paul to, to receive the money for, to, to, to give donations and things like that, just because they, they gathered on the first day of the week doesn't mean that now is the Sabbath. That now is the day that we gather weekly. Nowhere in Scripture does it say that now we have the authority to change the Sabbath from Sabbath to Sunday. Nowhere. Nowhere in Scripture does it say consistently that the Gentiles and the Apostles gathered together consistently on the first day of the week. Nowhere. In fact, watch this. Acts 13, 41. It says, Behold ye despisers and wonder and perish, for I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe, Though a man declare it unto you, and when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Not the next day. Not the next day. The next Sabbath. Now watch. Let's keep going. Now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them persuaded them to continue in the grace of God, and when? And the next Sabbath day, not, not that Sunday, not that first day of the week, because it was Sabbath, and then after Sabbath it was the first day of the week, not that following Sunday, nope, it says the next Sabbath came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. But then you say, Tilla, how do you know that also the Gentiles were there? Again, we can go back to verse 43 or 42. It says that Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next day. No, not the next day, not the next day, which is the first day of the week. No, the next Sabbath. And so now this is the next Sabbath now. And it says that the whole city gathered together, almost the whole city gathered together, together, to hear the word of God. Okay? But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy. Why would the Jews be filled with, filled with envy? It says when the Jews saw the multitudes, these were Gentiles. They were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said it was necessary that the word of God, this is the same day, same day, Sabbath, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles, same day, same day, Sabbath. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles. The Gentiles were there. That same day, Sabbath, not the next day, not the next day from, from last week when they said, hey, next Sabbath, preach this to us. They didn't say tomorrow, first day of the week. No, they said next Sabbath. Acts 18, we can start from verse 1. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, and came unto them, and because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought, for by their occupation they were tent makers. And he reasoned in the synagogue every what? Every Sunday? Every first day out of the week? Nope. Every Sabbath, and persuaded the Jews and the what? 
and the Greeks, those are Gentiles. So what was the day that Jews and Greeks, Gentiles, were gathered together? Was it the first day out of the week? No, they consistently gathered together on the Sabbath in the synagogues. How do we know that this was consistent? Let's read it again. And he reasoned in the synagogue when? Every Sabbath. Every Sabbath. And persuaded both Jews and the Greeks, Gentiles. Now we can say so many, th so many more things here. We can say, we can talk about Colossians 2. I have a video on Colossians 2, links in the description box below. If you guys want a deeper study on this, my letter to a Sunday keeper. That is the documentary that we made a couple years ago. It's about the Sabbath. The link for that is in the description box below. He didn't talk about Colossians 2. He didn't talk about Romans 14. Again, we, we dissect all of that in the movie, My Letter to a Sunday Keeper. Again, the link for that is in the description box below. Again, I could not believe, I can't believe that I, 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 was ev I would even see the day where I have to correct Pastor Mike Winger on this point. I, look, I like the guy. I love the guy. He's, for the most part, he does his research well. But when it comes to the Sabbath, he didn't do his homework. He did not do his homework. So Pastor Mike Winger, if you want to talk about this even more in private, we can. My email is in the description box below. We can talk, phone call, and you don't even have to respond that's okay with me. And like I said, I like Pastor Mike Winger. I like some of his stuff. But please pray for him. Pray for me as well. Pray for me as well. Because I do get passionate when it comes to these things or this, this particular subject. I do get passionate about it because a lot of people claim these things and they don't do their homework. I just want to take this time now to thank everybody who's been supporting this ministry via PayPal. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Ruslan. Thank you, Claudine. And thank you, Brett, for the donations. The donations do help us keep this ministry afloat. For those of you guys who want to support this ministry, you guys can do so by praying for this ministry and also donating at schoolforprofits.tv via PayPal. The link is in the description box below. If you guys want to support a different way, you guys can do so by purchasing one of these, Revelation verse by verse. For those of you guys who have trouble with the book of Revelation, this is the book for you. This goes through the book of Revelation, verse by verse. Links for these are also in the description box. Or you guys can purchase some SFP hats, some SFP shirts at sfpmerch.shop. Link is in the description box. I again just want to say that I hope that I've answered some of the questions here. I know that there are some other questions. Colossians 2, Romans 14, Hebrews 4, I believe. But again, those questions are answered by the movie, My Letter to a Sunday Keeper. Link is in the description box. Special shout out to our swordsmiths. If you guys want to join our swordsmith community so that you guys can fellowship with us and everything, go to sfpswordsmith.com. When you guys get there, you guys can sign up as a free member and join our community or sign up as a monthly supporter, become a swordsmith, and you guys can unlock the swordsmith courses that we will be doing in a couple of weeks. Once you guys get there, you guys will land at the general community chat here. Introduce yourself, say hi, and we will say hi back to you because that's what we do as Christians. We're supposed to be cool and we're supposed to be friendly. And we are supposed to also say hi when people say hi to us because we're cool like that. You know what I'm saying? So thank you guys again. Praise God always. See you guys on the next one. Peace and avocado grease. Bye. My brother, we must be careful of what we teach because it can lead our fellow believers away from the truth. There is no easy way to say this. I believe you might be teaching false doctrine. There is absolutely no scripture in all of the Bible where it shows that somehow God gave a command or that the apostles under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit somehow transferred the importance or the solemnity of the Sabbath from the seventh day to the first day.
obviously the cross is the central theme of Christianity. It's literally the, the, the main story that we focus on because if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't have salvation. However, let us not forget, while yes, the cross is very important, it's the disobedience to God's law that put Jesus on the cross. And if God's law could have been changed, then Jesus Christ need not to have died. Show me where it is that the Sabbath was changed, and I'll stop keeping it. But if you're unable to show me, then I would challenge you to just try keeping one Sabbath for the Lord. Try keeping one, calling it a delight, reflecting on God's creation, remembering that we do have a creator.